What's up everyone? I'm Joshua Burta from Zemo Media and this is Ask a Marketer. In today's video we'll be discussing how to set up Google Analytics 4 on WordPress. I'll show you how to set up the property itself, how to install the tag using a head and footer plugin, as well as Google Tag Manager. Then I'll show you how to test that your tag is actually working. And finally, I'll take you through a few settings so that you can ensure that your property is optimized. The first thing you're going to want to do is head into Google Analytics. So to do this, you can head into Google and simply type in Google Analytics over here into the search. And once it pops up, you can just click on through. Once it opens up, you can navigate to the bottom left corner and click on admin, and then you can go ahead and create an account. If you already have an account, then instead you can simply create a property as Google Analytics 4 is simply a property inside of your Google Analytics account. But for the sake of this video, I'll go ahead and create a new account. The first thing you'll need to do is create an account name. I will go ahead and name this Zemo Media Demo. And then I'll also just tick this box so that I can help our friends at Google improve their services. However, this is entirely optional. Then you'll need to click on next. And now you'll need to create a Google Analytics 4 property name. I will continue on my trend and name this Zemo Media Demo. However, you're welcome to name this whatever works for you. Uh, you'll also want to review your reporting time zone and currency. So for my business, the United States and the US dollar is perfect. However, I would like to change the time zone to Chicago time instead. You don't really need to head into the advanced options over here, seeing as all this will allow you to do is create a universal property. But Google will be phasing this out very soon, so there isn't really a point. Once you click on next, you'll be requested to add in additional business information. This is once again entirely optional. However, I will go ahead and just add in a bit, inf a bit of information so that Google has a better understanding of what I am targeting. And there you go. So then if I click on create, you'll be greeted with a terms of service, which you can go ahead and read through and also then accept. And once you've done this, you have officially created your first Google Analytics 4 property. So congratulations. <laughs> now you're going to want to create a data stream. So as you can see over here, you have the option to create one for web, Android app or iOS app. But seeing as we are installing one on a WordPress website, we can go ahead and click on web. You'll be requested to add in your URL, which I will go ahead and add over there. And then you can also just name your stream, which I will once again name Zemo Media Demo. You want to ensure that the enhanced measurements are set up as mine are, and then you can go ahead and create stream. You'll see a window pop up which contains your Google tag. This tag needs to be added to the back end of your website so that you can start collecting data. For WordPress, there are many ways that you can do this, such as using plugins, installing it directly into your header code, or otherwise using Google Tag Manager. For this video, I'll be showing you how to use Google Tag Manager as well as how to install it using a header and footer plugin. There are also other plugins that you can consider, such as Monster Insights, the Sidekit, or otherwise GA Google Analytics WordPress plugin. The first method that we'll be looking into is using a header and footer plugin. You can go ahead and copy your code, then navigate over to the back end of your website, where you'll need to install the actual plugin. The one that we recommend using is the head and footer code by this creator over here. Once you've finished installing this plugin, you can navigate over to tools and then head to the bottom of the list. Here you'll find the head code section at the total top of the page. You can simply paste your code in there and then navigate to the bottom of the page and click on save changes. And just like that, you've finished installing your new code onto your website. The second method that I'll be showing you is how to use Google Tag Manager to install this code. So to do this, you'll need to head into Tag Manager first of all, which you can find at tagmanager.google.com. 
If you already have a container set up for your website, then you can go ahead and use this. Otherwise, you can create an account over here in the top right corner. You will need to once again name this account, which I will name Zemo Media Demo for the purpose of this video. And then I'll keep the country the United States. However, you will need to change this according to wherever you are located. You can also go ahead and share data anonymously with Google and others so that you can help them improve their services. However, this is entirely optional. You can then create a container, which you will need to once again add a container name for. And typically you can use your website's URL for this or simply the domain. Um, so you'll need to remove the HTTPS in front. Um, and this is a perfectly good container name. You can also go ahead and name this anything else such as blog or something along those lines or whatever suits you best. Um, seeing as we are setting this up for a WordPress website, we will you need to click on web over here and then you can go ahead and click on create. Once you've done this, you will once again be greeted by a terms of service, which you can click on I accept and then say yes. Once you've done this, you'll see a window pop up over here and this you can simply close down for now. Now that we have our Google Tag Manager account set up, we can go ahead and link this to our WordPress site. The best way to do this is actually to download another plugin, which is called GTM for WP. Um, once you've downloaded this, you can go ahead and click on the settings over here. And then you'll find a section where you can add your Google Tag Manager ID. You can find this by going back into your Google Tag Manager and then simply copying this ID over here and then adding that into this section over here. Once you've done this, you can click on Save Changes and just like that, you've linked your Google Tag Manager to your WordPress site. The next thing that you'll need to do is link your Google Tag Manager account to your Google Analytics 4. So you can do this by heading back into Google Analytics, then you can exit the instructions that you've had open and simply click on the copy button over here next to the measurement ID. Now you can head back into Google Tag Manager, click on new tag and then name this tag, which I will name GA4 Zima Media Demo. However, you can go ahead and name this whatever you like or whatever makes sense. Now by clicking in this box, we can set up the configuration for the tag which you can go ahead and just click on Google Analytics J4 configuration. Over here, you'll find a section where you can paste the measurement ID, which you have just copied from Google Analytics. And now you can click outside the box. Uh, next, you'll need to set up a trigger, which I will select all pages, which means that the Google Analytics 4 property will be viewing all the pages on your site, which is the preferred method. Then you can go ahead and click on save. And just like that, you have linked your Google Analytics to your Google and Google Tag Manager. The only other thing that you'll need to do is click on submit over here. You can go ahead and name the version, which we can name version one GA4 link. And then you can add a description of what you've done. So we can say over here linked GA4 property. Now you can go ahead and click on publish. And just in a little while, you'll notice that it has finished linking your Google Analytics 4 to your Google Tag Manager. And this means that now your Google Analytics 4 should be tracking data that's running through your website. You will need to test whether the tag is actually working. To do this, you can open up a new tab to your website, which I have done already. And then you can head back into your GA4 property, click on reports over here on the left hand side, and then click on real time. You should see all the people that are currently active on your website, including yourself. And if you don't see any data in here, it could be one of two things. Either you were slightly too fast for your website and it hasn't actually registered that the tag is working, in which case you can wait half an hour to an hour. And if you still don't see any data in here, then it means that you will need to rewind the video and double check that you didn't miss a step. 
now it's time for the real fun to start. You'll need to configure a few settings inside of your Google Analytics 4 property so that you can have it fully optimized. To start, you can head into your account settings over here on the left hand side and simply scroll down and double check that the data processing terms are actually accepted. If they aren't accepted, you will see an option where you can go ahead and accept them. And this is a necessary step to ensure that you can get the most out of your Google Analytics account. Then you can head over here into data settings and click on data collection. This is a quick setup which will tremendously help your overall Google signals. So you can go ahead and click on get started. Then you can click on continue and activate. This will allow you to track better across multiple devices. The next thing you can do is head into the user data collection acknowledgement and just go ahead and click on I acknowledge. And just like that, you've completed the first section of your settings. Next, you'll want to head into data retention and just double check that this is set to 14 months instead of just two so that you have a little bit more data on your hands. You can also head, head into the attribution settings and just double check that this is set to data driven, 30 days and then 90 days. If this is how it is set up, then this is fantastic. The next thing you'll need to do is set up some referral exclusions. So you can head into the, your data streams, then click on your tag over here, head on down and click on configure tag settings. And just like that, you can go ahead and click on show all. Then you can scroll down and click on list unwanted referrals. What this will allow you to do is add in a few domains that you don't want referrals from. The first one that you'll need to add is your own domain so that you don't accidentally count double traffic. Then you can also go ahead and add in any payment gateways if you are doing sales on your site, such as paypal.com or otherwise pay.google.com or you can also add in pay.facebook.com if you are using MetaPay. These are all great examples of payment gateways, but if you're using a different one, then I do suggest finding the domain for it and then adding it in here as well. Once you're done with your list, you can go ahead and click on save. For more accurate data, you'd also like to define internal traffic. What this will allow you to do is add IP addresses for you and your teammates so that if you go onto the website, then it doesn't actually track your progress. So to do this, you can go ahead and click on create over here in the right hand corner. Then you can name this rule, which I will go ahead and name team Zima. And then I'll go ahead and click on IP address equals over here. If you don't know your IP address, you can go ahead and click on what's my IP address in the top right corner where Google will open up this um, browser over here and you can go ahead and copy your IP address, paste it in there and then go ahead and click on create. And just like that, you've defined the internal traffic. You can also go ahead and exit this and then just double check that you aren't collecting universal analytics events as well. So ensure that this toggle switch is off. We're nearly done with our setup. So you can go ahead and close all of these extra windows and head back into the main menu of your property. And then you can scroll down. Here you'll find product links. These allow you to link your Google Analytics 4 property to other accounts that you may have, such as your Google Search Console account or otherwise your Google Ads account. If you click on it over here, then you can just simply click on link over here on the right hand corner and then choose the account and link it as you go through the process. And just like that, you've finished linking all of your accounts and finished all the basic settings inside of your Google Analytics 4 property. Congratulations, you've finished your setup. Thanks for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it valuable. If you're craving more awesome content, be sure to explore our channel, packed with tips, tricks and expert guidance just for you. What's more, we're currently offering complimentary website audits, so you can uncover the secrets to skyrocketing your site's growth. 
the links waiting for you in the bio. Before you go, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more videos like this.